what is the optimal amount of protein that you should take to get swole. We're gonna cover this in depth with a recent research article and we're gonna start right now. How can we get as swole as possible? It's gonna come down to lifting weights, right? Stimulating that muscle protein synthesis and then afterwards eating that protein immediately but we shouldn't have more than 20 to 25 grams of protein because then we would just be peeing it out, right? So we need to use lifting, then we need to partition these amino acids to signal for our body to then spark that muscular growth. And we've even seen in research papers like this, ingested protein dose response of muscle and albumin protein synthesis after resistance exercise in young men that 20 to 25 grams should be the perfect amount of protein consumption to help us get jacked. And this is mainly the reason why a lot of individuals, including myself, were told by the old school coaches that as you're coming up, hey, make sure you've got that protein consumed within that 30 minute window. That's that anabolic window. And then as long as you have those 20 to 30 grams, you're going to be good. You're going to be on your way to making those gains. And then we even were told we've got to make sure that we divvy up our nutrition over six different feedings. We got to balance everything so that we can continuously make optimal improvements in the weight room and even overarching physical improvements. But then there started to be a little bit of an irony, especially around fasted athletes. Now, I am not a fasting zealot, but I tend to know quite a bit of athletes that train fasted in the morning and they might not even consume protein for say three, four, five hours after they're done lifting, they're still strong and they're still shredded. And a lot of this actually started out with my brother who ended up getting diagnosed with epilepsy was informed, hey, try this ketogenic diet. Hey, try this fasted diet. Go on the Ori Hoffmeckler warrior diet. Okay, so this was be fasted for 20 hours out of the day and you can eat for four hours out of the day. And then that started to spark this interesting conversation of if he's only eating once or twice a day within a four hour time frame, and each time because he weighed about 230 pounds he's gonna have over 100 grams of protein wouldn't he just be peeing out that protein and the cool aspect here is there's actually some recent research that dives into eating up to 100 grams of protein in one sitting and what happens and so when we're talking about our athletes coming into the gym and they're coming here you're a strength coach and you're looking at an individual and saying hey i'm going to tell you the best thing that you can do i'm going to tell you what you can work up to if you're eating a certain amount of protein and where we're going to see the best feeling with the best response for your overarching growth so this takes us into this cool modern aspect okay and recently Jorn Tromalen who's one of the best protein researchers out there along with Luke Van Loon and their entire team ended up breaking down what happens if we get someone who consumes 25 grams of protein and they lump these individuals into a specific group. Then they get individuals who consume 100 grams of protein after a workout. And then they have a placebo group with no protein consumption, okay? So we're gonna have three groups, 25 grams of protein, 100 grams of protein, and then no protein. And what ends up being really, really cool here is they're actually using tracers inside of the protein so they can track, okay, when does this protein get introduced into the muscle tissue? Okay, when does it actually get utilized and how long does it take? What are the different blood measurements? And so they're looking at a couple different aspects and they end up looking at this over a 12 hour time frame. Now, one thing that we gotta bring up right away is that the protein that they're using, okay, so they're taking these individuals, they're doing a workout, then they're having 100 grams of protein or they're having 25 grams of protein or they're not having protein at all and they're gonna be taking milk milk protein isolate. So milk protein isolate, also known as MPI, has about 60% of it as casein. And these same researchers also found that casein and whey have no difference in overnight muscle protein synthesis. And we can see that in this paper right here. Okay, so Jorn Tromalen is in on this paper, so is Luke Van Loon, and we can see some really good research just from that paper. So they're getting into the anabolic response to protein ingestion during recovery from exercise 
and what is that upper limit in magnitude, okay? What is that actual upper limit? So what ends up happening? They go through a tough workout, they drink 25 grams of protein, okay? They go through a tough workout or they drink 100 grams of protein. We should see based off of you know, the old school theory that there's not gonna be any difference in muscle protein synthesis. So what were the results? Okay, this is where things get really interesting is that the group that consumed 25 grams of protein, they had a great response. Uh, their body utilized the protein and they had great muscle protein synthesis. They did a hard workout. Now, one thing I did also wanna bring up is that these individuals in both groups, the 100 gram group and the 25 gram group tend to be untrained individuals. So they're gonna be pretty responsive to resistance-based training. Now, the rise in stability of availability of protein was higher in the 100 grams than in the 25 grams, meaning the individuals that consumed 100 grams of protein had more bioavailability and they could then use more amino acids to gain muscle mass, okay? So this is showing that if you consume 100 grams of protein, despite the increase in amino acid oxidation rates, okay, the study reveals a positive correlation between protein intake and whole body protein net balance. So this ends up suggesting that our body can use a much larger amount of amino acids or a much larger amount of protein without having it push into oxidation than we originally thought. So there's potential here that there's no limit to protein derived amino acid bioavailability. Now, the interesting aspect here is that how can we actually apply this? So if we're consuming 100 grams of protein, at least according to uh, Tromelin and, and Luke Van Loon, those guys all together, that essentially that we can have 100 grams of protein post-workout. What are the applications? I think, first of all, it's important to identify that these were untrained individuals, okay? So again, they're gonna be more responsive. That doesn't mean this is a bad study. It just means it'd be interesting if we looked at maybe intermediately trained athletes and then really advanced trained athletes and how their body uses uh, and, and dishes out this protein. The biggest aspect here, though, I think is that it really doesn't matter if you're having a massive amount of protein in one sitting versus a massive amount of protein throughout six sittings. I think there's an important aspect of understanding mechano growth factor, which we talked about like four years ago on this channel and what that anabolic window actually is. In all reality, the anabolic window is like 36 to 72 hours theoretically. So I think the big factor comes back to when you train within the next couple of hours, try to have some type of protein. Whether you have 50 or 20 grams of protein or 75 grams of protein, your body is going to know how to partition those amino acids and use it for muscle protein synthesis. And so when we have athletes come into the gym and they ask this question, I think it's easy to say, look, you can have 30 to 40 grams as you're walking out the door and your body's gonna utilize that protein in a shake. You can also go home and you can crush you know, a whole bunch of steak or, or, or chicken or whatever, and you might have 60 to 80 grams. Your body is still going to use that over a long period of time. You're not going to just pee out that protein as though it never was inside of your body. Okay, so there really is no upper limit to the amount of protein consumption that you'll have. Now, we also have to factor in what's the caloric intake then if we're every single meal having 100 grams of protein, there is going to be an excess of calories potentially if we're not moving our macros around effectively. So I think it's just as strength coaches, we have to continuously educate our athletes that look, you can take extra protein. And especially the most important aspect here is that your strength training or resistance training or endurance training on a regular basis, okay? If we uphold that consistency and we uphold that you should be consuming healthy nutrition, whole foods, along with some type of supplements, that's gonna optimize your overall performance and that's gonna help you achieve those big time goals. If you guys need help with achieving those goals, head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, or the Apple iOS Store. Because remember, freaks, you always need to have your protein and you always have to cultivate your power. Peace.